If you were in Cleveland today, the world's largest rubber duck uh, just got here. So if you're all about that and um, you want to go, you want to go see the rubber duck, go see the rubber duck, man. Just go see it. He's here. Um, but aside from that, there are a lot of important things to talk about today. And we are going to round the bases on many, many things today. Starting with NBA free agency. There has not been a lot the last couple of days. Um, we had Luke and Bob Mute go to the Clippers, Damian Lee go to the Warriors, and James Ennis go to the Rockets. Uh, and that's really it. Nothing's going on, but uh, except Summer League. And here in Cleveland, that has mattered a whole lot. Uh, in our last game, we played the Kings, which we won 96 to 84. Colin Sexton has shown up so far. Now, of course, Marvin Bagley didn't play that game. We are three and one. Tied for the best record with a loss. And like I said, Colin Sexton has shown up. Uh, he scored 25 points. He had seven assists and four rebounds. Uh, also on the, he also had plus 22, also on the team. Uh, O'Carl White, 13 points. Uh, Zizic and Chetty did not play. Uh, John Holland, 5 points. Um, Artis with 14. Then off the bench, uh, Preston and Smith with 10. Uh, Preston, 10.6 rebounds is the... Um, the prospect that the Cavs picked up, who was formerly of, I believe, Kansas. I think he's formerly of Kansas. And so, Colin has been excellent so far. He really has. Um, all of his games have been good. Uh, he's shown up extremely well. He can create his own shot. Um, haven't seen him play a ton of defense at Summer League, whatever. Um, Zizic has shown up a lot. Chetty has looked great. Our free throw shooting for these young guys is good. The three-point shooting is not great. Um, but... The young prospects for the Cavaliers are a little impressive. I've been pleasantly surprised thus far with uh, this team. Not that I'm expecting them to come out and be amazing. Um, also, I believe the next game is Saturday. I believe it's Saturday. Come to game on today. Uh, Miami, New Orleans, New York, Boston, Memphis, Oklahoma City, Philadelphia, Phoenix, San Antonio, Milwaukee, uh, the Clippers, and the Lakers. 
uh, Jazz Orlando, and then Atlanta Portland. So Phoenix will get to see DeAndre Ayton. New York Kevin Knox, most likely. Atlanta Trey Young. Milwaukee Dante. Um, last name difficult to enunciate. Div Div and then Divincenzo. That was close, I think. Um, probably not, but it's fine. But one thing about the summer league is that it's never been more of a big deal than it is now. It's never been a huge thing. I mean, however long ago, we weren't even really paying attention to the Summer League as a whole. Um, uh, and it's just, it's come such a long way. The, the, the Summer League is so important now that you could find somebody out of nowhere and it would totally benefit your team to have them there. Um, and it's a great way for these young draft picks to get ironed out before the season. So for guys like, um, for guys like, Trey Young, this is make or break a little bit. You're on a terrible team. You got traded to Atlanta from Dallas. And um, you are the alleged new Steph Curry, similar skill set, similar shot style, similar a lot of things. But you have not shown up yet. You just kind of, you've gone in, you've shot your shot, and you haven't really done a whole lot. Um, You haven't really done a lot. And you get a guy like Colin Sexton who has way less press on him and way less um, way less pressure. And he's playing great. Uh, and Kevin Knox has really done well. DeAndre Ayton well. Bagley well. Um, Shai um, Alec... Or, Alexander, Shy Alexander for the Clippers, has played good. So, Summer League is definitely a good chance to iron out your talent, see what you got, and the Cavs have some healthy, good prospects, and Chetty and, and Ante have really surprised me thus far. Uh, speaking of surprises, let's jump over to tennis. Um, last year's Wimbledon winner was Roger Federer, um, but he is out. And I actually watched that match. Um, why? So, 
apparently here's how the match went down. Um, up a break in the second game of the match. Up 30 love. Federer won the first set in 23 minutes. But in less than an hour from them, he was beat. Kevin Anderson is a six foot eight South African man. And he slowly built his big game in until he pitched the unservable return or the unreturnable serve to Federer with a two six. Six seven five seven five six four thirteen eleven. Roger Federer gave credit to Anderson and he said he felt mentally and physically fatigued after the loss. And I caught it. At 11-11, I was like, wow. This has really gone on a long time. This last um, set. So it's 11-11. By the way, Federer is 36 years old. Huge man, powerful. He's eighth in the world. And those last two sets, Federer never really looked like he had a shot. He looked tired. He looked drained. Um, and Anderson had resolve to beat him. And it was one of those matches where in Federer's history, you know he's going to win a certain match and you know he's going to lose a certain match. Well, this looked like he was definitely going to lose this match. And then on the other end, Novak Djokovic, um, is in the semifinal. He plays Rafa Nadal. And the Rafa Nadal, Juan Martin, the Potro match was great. Caught some of that. Um, it looked like Rafa was not going to win for a hot minute. He he didn't look his best. He didn't play his best. Um, what looked to be most of the match, but um, he he did it, and him and Djokovic will play, and uh, Anderson will go in. Uh, to the semi as well. And we will have the um, Isner, Anderson, Djokovic, Nadal um, tomorrow at 7 a.m. And then, will that be Sunday or Saturday? Today is, what's today? Thursday. Uh, Friday the 13th. Oh, well, that's fun. Didn't even realize it. This just in, Friday the 13th. Okay. So, yeah, on Sunday at 9 a.m. will be uh, the final for, hopefully, Anderson Nadal is what I want to see. 
because Nadal's my favorite, and Anderson. I mean, Isner's the American, um, and having an American in the final would be really cool, but Anderson intrigues me more as a tennis player. Now, I know usually in this first hour we're doing local stuff. Uh, we're doing um, regular things. Touched on the Cavs a bit. Um, we'll get to the Indian series with Cincinnati here in a bit. But uh, the reason I wanted to go a little bit out of the way here was to attack Wimbledon and uh, FIFA, the World Cup. As we now have our final. France and Croatia from groups C and D. France has 59% chance to win the World Cup, Croatia 41%. This is not the final. This is not the final that anybody anticipated. England had a strong, strong chance to make it. Now, France is favored in the uh, power index, but France does not consider themselves the, uh, the, um, the favorite. Croatia has flown into this final and are playing maximum level um, soccer. And they really are. So France uh, allegedly is the favorite, but Croatia probably has the most confidence. Today. Who do you want to win? I don't know how many of you care about soccer, but uh, I originally started at the beginning of the World Cup by saying I didn't want Croatia to win. Well, now it's France-Croatia, and I have many, many friends who um, are Croatian, who are uh, from Croatia, visit Croatia often because they still have family there. And so because of that allegiance, um, because I have so many people I know who are from Croatia, I see their, their national pride, and um, I love it. And I don't know um, any native uh, French Americans, or well, they wouldn't be native if they were French American. Well, I don't know any French Americans, and I don't know any native um French people. Um, so I guess because of that, I have to, you know, kind of buy into the Croatia thing. There's a poll going up now. Um, Who is the World Cup winner?
on them, obviously. The options are France and Croatia. Now, for the longest time, um, I had um, uh, tons and tons of people who I knew. Who were Croatian, and I still, I still um, know them. And so I know they all want Croatian to win. So I'm likely to get a lot of Croatia votes. But it is out there now on the Facebook page, the Cameron Masella Show, live, or just, just on Red Line Radio. Go to the Facebook page, give it a like, give it a share, and vote in the poll. Will Croatia win or will France win? Uh, also in Wimbledon, you have the women's and um, Serena is currently up 3-2 in the first set. And um, obviously all eyes on her. Anytime either of them are in one of these major events, it is always all eyes on either of them. So we'll just have to see what happens. Because this, um, this could prove to be potentially one of her last major events that she performs exceptionally in because they are getting older. They have had some injuries. Well, Serena's had some injuries. Um, she was also, um, I believe she was the one that had the child um, recently and, you know, relative to recently. Um So there's that. But go check it out. It's currently on ESPN. So, um, the next thing I want to get into, again, thank you for being here. I always appreciate the listener. As I look to do, let's do some Cleveland. Um, let's start with the Browns. So, 
So you've got um, all this young talent on the Browns. And the supplemental draft was just had. Uh, Josh Gordon was the supplemental draft pick um, several years ago. They've been 20 and 76 since picking him. Has he really been worth the trouble? Has he been worth that draft pick? I would think yes, uh, only because it's the supplemental draft. Um, And because it's it's just the supplemental draft, you're not really like losing. You're not really hold losing a whole lot when you make a pick in the in the supplemental draft. So because of that fact, um, I think he has totally been worth it because um, when he's out there and he's fully healthy and he gives you everything that you want him to give you, it's tough to complain about it. Now, I have said repeatedly that I don't want him on the team anymore. And, um, and that's been over the years. Um, I just really don't, I just really have not cared a whole lot about Josh Gordon because of his, his inability to stay clean. his inability to well that's really kind of it because it all wraps around and it all wraps back to he has not been able to stay on the field And that is the real tragedy of Josh Gordon in the NFL, is he has not been able to stay on the field, out of trouble, but we'll see. The Browns have a lot of positive things going on right now. Another team that has good young things going on are the Cavs. 
And um, now that LeBron is gone, now that the Cavs are, sh are, are unshackled from LeBron, Now that it feels different and they're going to trade different, they're going to play different, um, they're going to be different. Everything is going to be different. And I think I think it's going to be I mean there's tons of exciting things about it, right? Like, you've got to feel kind of ready to move on at this point from LeBron. You didn't want him to leave, but now that he's gone, it's like, huh. This is the cleaning. I didn't know I needed Right? Like, you, you didn't want to break up, but now that you got there, I mean, you've been together for, you know, off and on for 11 years. And then you get there and you're like, wow, I didn't know I needed this. I didn't know I needed to get away because they were controlling and bossy and they caused a lot of drama outside of the relationship among your friends and um, it wasn't always perfect, but we got it done. We had that one that one year, you know, that everything was perfect despite all the problems. You know? Everything was uh, perfect. for however long, you know. It's not like um It's not like um, it didn't always have to be perfect. But, you know,
It was really never perfect. And because it wasn't perfect, and because there were issues, and yada, yada, yada. There was a breakup. But now you found a new, younger, sexier, relatively, um, more direct kind of person in Colin Sexton. And so you've got the chance to see what he's got to see what he can do he's a tech kind of guy he's shown tremendous um he has shown tremendous ability He has shown tremendous um, what's the word? Initiative. And the dude has, um, he has a lot to offer. Now, one thing that I, I'm more intrigued to see is more Chetty, uh, more Ante, uh, but younger guys uh, could become
could become a rarity. Um, apparently, Adam Silver wants to create a better system where younger guys can't drop into the league right away. And I think this is definitely the right move for the NBA. By 2021, we should have this rule. We should have Um, a good feel on that um, soon. Because this is only a few short years away. And we'll no longer have the one and dones. We'll no longer have the um, The guy is way too, um, really way too young to even be in the NBA at all. So that's all going to be gone soon. I, and again, I think this is definitely the right move for the NBA because you have just you have the young guys that come in, they're terrible. Um, There are a lot of good things to like about where the league is going, where the Cavs are going. Tonight is the Indians game, and it's Kluber Severino. We play the Yankees. My parents will be going to that game. Expect tonight to feel like a playoff game. So 
Speaking of good feelings, yesterday the Indians won 19 to 4. Two in the first, nine in the third, six in the fourth, two in the seventh. 19 hits, 19 runs. Ramirez, two home runs. Frankie, a blast. Hitting us a homer. We are now 50 and 41 on the season. So you drop the first two. You don't feel good about it. Well, now you've crossed 50 wins and you were the last division lead to do so. We still maintain that plus 82 difference, which among division leaders is second, only to the Red Sox and then the Yankees. Um, I lied. Um, it goes Astros, Red Sox, Yankees, Cubs, Indians. So they have top five. So that's good. That's huge. Um, and that proves that we are playing good baseball, but at the same time, at the same time, it's, uh, I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to expect from this team at this point, you know. They have played well. Recently. I am very happy about the direction the team has ultimately gone. Um, but there is still all this crap about Manny Machado. I don't want Manny Machado. We don't need Manny Machado. You need bullpen. And that has never been more clear than the Cincinnati um, series. You need bullpen. You need more pitchers. Your starting rotation is awesome. They are one of the best, if not the best, when fully healthy. They're unbeatable. And yet we find ourselves not up with Boston and the Yankees because the bullpen cannot
get it done late in games when the bullpen's out there. The bullpen just has so many issues. I know, I know. Miller's hurt. And he hasn't really been the same this season. And I know. We haven't had a ton of help at the back. I get it. I really do get it. I understand where you're coming from. But this team specifically... should not have that problem. And when I say that, I mean that this team should have been better prepared. to deal with it. Right? With with all of the resources that we have as as the Cleveland Indians, shouldn't we have that now what we do have are two guys having the best seasons potentially in Cavs history or Cavs history, oh my gosh, in Indians history. So, um, Ramirez is not entirely on pace to match Lou Bordeaux's 1948 MVP season, uh, which was 10.9 war with a 3.55, a 4.53, and a 5.34, and a a 29.4 fielding and positional adjustment runs above average. Ramirez has a 5.7 war, tied with Elmer Flick in 1905 for 70th best in team history. If he hits 6.0, it would tie him with Travis Hafner in 06, Omar Buskell in 99, Nap LaJoy in 09, 1909. Shinshu Chu of 2010 and Jintomi of 95 for 59th. It would also put him on pace for a 9.37 F war. It would put him second. He's on pace for 42 home runs, 10th in Hindi history. He would be the 20th, 25th player to record a plus 1000 OPS. Lindor entered with a 5.2 FR, tied with Albert Bell and Coco Crisp. 
At this pace, he would land between 8.4 and 8.6. The two of them became the first MLB teammates, 25 or younger, to hit 25 home runs before the All-Star break. They'd be the 15th pair of teammates since 1901 to post seasons of plus eight war. They are having a season. Both of them. And the attendance has been relatively good. I think Ramirez should have done the uh, home run derby. He turned it down, not his speed. That's okay. Not your gig. I feel it. I get it. I understand. This has been an entire first hour of the Karen Masella Show. Thank you for tuning in, however you have tuned in, whether it's been through the live stream, which will now be separately uploaded to YouTube, um, or you're on the Mixer app or the TuneIn Radio app. However you're listening, thank you. It is about that time to let you know who supports us as a station here at Redline, Vitality Health Wellness Services. Get VitalityHealth.com for all their services, the massages, the B-shots, physical therapy, nutrition, everything that you need for your health. The health of your car, put it in the hands of Detroit Auto Parts, 480 East 200 Street, Euclid, Ohio, or Euclid, Ohio, yes, uh, 14400 Euclid Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, and 4941 Pro Road, Cleveland, Ohio. Mention Redline Radio and receive 10% off your purchase. Uh, car Idiots Forever, head to the website at caridiotsforever.com. Wiggins Construction, Home Improvement, Bathrooms, Kitchens, Windows, Doors, Siding, Roofing, and so much more. Contact William at 440 731-4654, the Middle Ridge Car Clinic, the doctor is in, 440-984-7527, Taylor Painting, Norm Taylor, Taylor Painting, Coloring Your World, since 1979, an award-winning contractor and painter, go check them out, everything that you'll need for all of your remodel painting needs, check on graphics, they supply the hats and the t-shirts. Head to the Redline Radio LLC Facebook page for more details on that. Also, the page just hit 1,000 likes two days ago. Kyle Dickinson wins the Radio LLC gift pack. He was the 1,000th like to the page. And thank you to all of you who support Red Lamb Radio, whether you listen to my show, whether you listen to any of the other shows. We appreciate you. Again, we have the radio advertising special, $79.95 a month for six months. That's 48% off the regular price. You can call Stephanie at 440-309-5961 for more info. So, with all that, and the deadline approaching for trades in the MLB, we're going to run through what ESPN believes to be their top headlines. And this is going to be a new thing that I want to do every time. What, what does ESPN think today? Well, the top headlines right now.
are as follows. Uh, the LeBron mural vandalized again, painted over. Papa John out as chairman, and more. So let's start with that mural. So we we all know the mural that was painted, you know, the king of L.A. Um, Twelve hours and two days. King of LA was up. It was vandalized with no king in three and six being his finals record. He, this is the same man who did the Kobe Bryant um, mural. Same guy. And uh, he took it down. Because um, he kept getting vandalized, and he didn't want it to be up there and just keep having to be vandalized and, you know, all that other great stuff. Which makes sense. I wouldn't want that either. Um, it just makes too much sense to not take it down. Those he doesn't know for sure who. But I'm sure there will be more murals to come. Papa John's founder, John Schnatter, resigns. He announced Wednesday evening that Schnatter had resigned. Louisville Board of Trustees Chairman J. David Grissom said in a letter that um, he stepped up, he stepped down. Um, and just a bunch of stuff that went down with him and the brand and just not good stuff, just very not good stuff. Um... So many things to point out. Um, I mean, just crazy, crazy 
weird um just weird i mean like st weird stuff has been going on with this dude and his his organization forever news reports attributing the use of inappropriate and hurtful language Uh, he did use racial slur. Um, so there's that. And that's fun. But I don't think that um, this is going to be a big deal another week. Um, another week and it'll be buried. It'll be as if it never happened. Next up on the list... Tim Tebow won for war, one for four in with a double in the Eastern League's All-Star Game. It was his first All-Star Game appearance. Doubled in his first at bat, and then the team lost to the West. Plays for um, the Mets Double A. Um, with the East rallied to tie the game with one run in the ninth. Then the West won with a home run. So Tim Tebow moving up in the world. He uh, was in the All-Star game. I think you will see him. on the Mets soon. I really do. And so there's a World Series of Poker thing. Pocket Aces beat two sets of Pocket Kings to set the World Series Poker final table. Now, this is apparently nearly impossible. This does not happen. Phil Helmuth extended his world record uh, pocket brace or poker bracelet win with his 15th win. And the a football club, Chelsea, sack Antonio Conte, coach. They reached a compensa compensation agreement for the final for final year of his contract to make way for a new coach. He kind of held them in limbo. He refused to leave the team um, until his final season. So um, good for them. They got out. Um, well, 
let's do now something more focused. Zach Lowe has an article up, Winners and Losers um, of the NBA offseason and free agency. The winner, well, one of the winners, Oklahoma City. They could get very, very good. They could get really good. Andre Roberson will be back. It'll be Westbrook, George, Roberson, Stephen Adams. No more distractions with Carmelo Anthony. Westbrook and George can focus on themselves. Jeremy Grant will be better. And again, Mello will be gone. So they'll be... Um... No mellow, saving money. And it's a three plus one deal for George. After the second year, he can sign an extension. Um, but he'll likely be, well, he'll be 34. 32, 33 by that point, and he won't be the same Paul George he is now. So. So the East lost. Milwaukee and Indiana will be better. Hopefully the Wizards won't collapse. Philadelphia, Boston, Toronto are the tops. Pistons are still sad, but now they get a full season with uh, Blake Griffin and a fully healthy team. They'll likely be better. The Hornets are a disaster. What they really need to do is fix the scheduling. A winner, the Lakers, they got LeBron. 
The Chris Paul Vito happened though. The Dwight Howard Steve Nash thing did not work. They got rid of D'Angelo Russell and Mozgov. Julius Randle's gone, but now they got LeBron. They overpaid Mozgov and Luol Deng. Uh, they screwed it up with um, Kevin Durant. Now they've got, you know, Cobble Pope back, Lance Stevenson, McGee, Rondo. They got LeBron and they won. They've also got Brandon Ingram, Kuzma, and Josh Hart. So they won. A loser, Cleveland, obviously. Uh, by default, Boston, Philadelphia, and Toronto win. Um, because LeBron is gone. Uh, another winner is free agency for next season because there are a ton of free agents that are top tier that are going to be leaving their teams likely. Um, a loser, the 2016 cap spike. A uh, bunch of terrible players or average players. Um, I have too much money. Um, as well as um, there's just so many things that have to do with the, the increase in cap and all the stars that are becoming free agents soon. Um, And there's still all this stuff about people going to the Knicks. Man, no one's going to the Knicks. Nobody is going to the Knicks, at least not right now. Not as long as that man is the owner. Winner wings of rotational markets. Detroit offered Glenn Robinson a two-year $8.3 million deal. It means more wing players and more... Um, well, really more wing players will see more money. Uh, the Pacers are a winner. They got Tyreek Evans. And Kylo Quinn. Sabonis and Miles Turner are back. Obviously, Victor Oladipo. Bajanovic, McDermott, the Pacers are going to be a really good team. And restricted free agents, we don't really know yet. Aaron Gordon did, didn't get his max. Zach Levine didn't leave Chicago. Lurkic went back to Portland. Plumlee got bailed on by Denver. Marcus Smart. Free agents have it tough now in the, in the NBA because there's just so many things that could be going on that just aren't. Well, the Pelicans got rid of Cousins and Rondo, they got Alfred Payton for him. Having Cousins means that you long-term are probably better, but um, Anthony Davis didn't want him back. They got Julius Randle. Um, most of that team is back. The Hornets, a loser. They got rid of Dwight Howard. That was good, though. But they're still terrible. And then the Warriors got better. So I want I want to discuss some more about the 
LeBron's new team. Rob Polinka said they wanted to surround LeBron with versatile defenders. Um, the Cavs are full of jump shooters. Full of jump shooters. And we know that the Lakers are not going to do what the Cavs did. They want defense. They want good mixture. Playmakers with Rondo and um, Lance. And then JaVale McGee brought in along top of the Ingram, Kuzma, Ball, Josh Hart, Young Core. It's not entirely a situation that... Um, they wanted to find themselves in because, well, now, they their goal is to win a championship, obviously. I don't know if they can do that. Because it's too young, and the Lakers have so much that they still want to do with the roster. And they brought in these extra guys to be the um, The enforcers, per se. To be the enforcers. So all these guys add playoff experience, defense in, a, in one capacity or another, and KCP is a tough defender. He shoots. Josh Hart, um, similar, but um, young. Brandon Ingram, um, they're trying to develop like LeBron, positionless. Uh, having LeBron there will be huge. Um, and then Lonzo Ball hurt, but uh, obviously he'll be better by the start of the season. And on the other end, you now have 
Celtics, who should be the favorite in the East. And um, Danny Ainge has repeatedly said that um, it's not going to be a cakewalk in the East. And I tend to believe him. I really do. Um, I tend to believe him when he says that because of um, the respect he has for other teams um, in the East. The respect he has for players um, in general. And I don't think it will be a cakewalk because you've got um, the Celtics, the Sixers, the Raptors, the Pistons will be improved, the Pacers improved, Bucks improved, Heat improved, um, Magic improved, Washington, if they can hold it together, uh, the Bulls will be improved, they retain Zach Levine. Um, who knows what the Knicks will do? Um, the Heat could, to, could keep building internally. Um, so the East, I think, is not as in a desperate situation as people think it is because we haven't seen this upcoming season yet. We don't know what's going to happen yet. So the, the Lakers are built around currently um, – LeBron and um, as well as Um, as well as um, the the young guys they've got around them. And I think that when it comes to the Lakers, I'm just not sure what's going to happen.
because they could end up being a really good team. They could also end up being terrible. We'll just have to wait and see. what goes on. And with that, We've got a half hour left in the show. Again, thank you for being here on the Carol Masella Show, live on Redline Radio. I want to talk more now <clears throat> about about the Indians. I want to talk about Andrew Miller. He threw off the mound um, the other day. Um, Terry Francona said he's advancing really well. He's been on the DL since May 26th. He's been throwing off a bullpen mound, and they moved him to the ballpark mound. His next step now is pitching to hitters. Um, as early as this this um, weekend, they want him to potentially pitch in Double A Akron. Um, so we will just have to wait and see, um, With him, he said, Terry Francona saying it's been a long time since uh, he's pitched against people. Um, the bullpen has struggled mightily um, since really the start of the season. It's been a problem. Um, it was never more obvious in this weekend's or in this midweek series. Because um, the most telling thing is not only that we need Andrew Miller, but we need Andrew Miller. That sound ridiculous. I 
but it's true. We really do need him. Because he brings um, a certain level of comfort. Because when you, you, you go out and you, you see him pitch, and it's like, yeah, okay, I feel good about this. I feel like it matters that he's out there. I feel like it matters that um, he's he's playing. And that's pretty big. When... Um, You've got nothing to lose by having him there. You know? So, I really can't, I don't see how bringing him back sooner would be the right thing to do, only because, um, He need because here's because here's the thing. He came back earlier in the season before he needed to, and now he's been hurt. And then Chisholm Hall's been out. Tomlin's back on the DL. So we really need um, this guy. Back and healthy. Um, he helped carry us in the 2016 campaign. Um, we got Tyler Olson back. And that's big. That's really big for us. But it continues to be the bullpen for the Indians as the issue. And people continue to want Manny Machado. I'm going to tell you something. If 
if you still want to push for um, Manny Machado, I would like you to leave Cleveland. He is not what we need. We need bullpen because it's been the largest problem the entire season. bullpen people you can't sit here and tell me that um You want Manny Machado, but don't want um, but don't want someone that will actually help the team. Because we know that Manny Machado is a bat that can help the team. But we also know We also know that We need bullpen. More than anything else.
more than anything else, we need that pick or that um that bullpen to be bolstered. There's nothing else to say about it. And Andrew Miller getting back is the start of that. The pitching stats have taken a hit. 15th in ERA at four now, mostly because of the bullpen. 11th in quality starts, fourth in whip, and the batting average is up. But the batting, fourth in run, seventh in batting average, seventh in on base, third in slugging. The batting is getting it done. The batting is getting it done. <clears throat> it just is. You can't deny it. The pitching has suffered tremendously. Tremendously. It is the goal for the Cleveland Indians to improve the bullpen. Because without bullpen, this team is a problem. And by problem, I mean inconsistent. Four game losing streak, y'all. And now we play the Yankees. And now we play the Yankees.
and who knows how this series with them is going to go. I mean, really, who knows? This last game, though, with the Reds was an example of how the Indians can play. It was a game of release. A game of frustration. Finally gone. Nineteen to four, and the bullpen didn't blow it. Thankfully. So now we'll see what we can do We'll see what we can do against the Yankees. And we'll see how it all works out. This has been the Cameron Masella Show. Live on Redline Radio. I thank you for tuning in. Again, however you've listened, whether through Mixler, the TuneIn Radio app, or not. Thank you for being here.
and thank you for being a fan. I'm certainly a fan of all of you. And we will see you next week. For more show. A minute left again. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you to all the listeners. Thank you for Redline. We're to Redline for having me on. This is always a good time. Thank you to our sponsors who keep everything running for us. Um, go check out the Rubber Duck, the big one that's uh, downtown. Uh, make sure you pay attention to the Summer League. Colin Sexton, the Indians are on tonight against the Yankees, and um, we'll just patiently wait. For more Browns news, uh, catch Wimbledon. Please catch the final uh, FIFA game. Lots of good sports over the weekend. I will surely be paying attention uh, as much as I can for most of it. So for me, for Redline, this has been the Cameron Masella Show, live on Redline Radio. And we'll see you on Monday. Go Indians. <laughs>